welcome to the Solano Summer Squash class. Uh, I see we have some repeat customers here in the crowd. Welcome back. I'm Stephanie Jordan. I'm the local food program manager with Sustainable Solano. And this is one of many classes that we are doing to raise awareness of specialty crops. And as Allison mentioned, we will be having one of our farmers joining us for the end of today's class, Farmer Ben Lyons of Lockwood Acres. And uh, this is part of a series to, as I said, raise awareness of specialty crops. And those are primarily things that we eat. It's vegetables, it's fruit, it's tree nuts, it's culinary herbs, and um, edible flowers too, all of that. So we're focusing on the edibles and we're doing a lot of cooking classes virtually and hopefully someday live and in person between now and March of 2022. So we've got about two years-ish of this. And so today I wanted to focus on squash. Um, we're looking at lots of different zucchinis and patty pan squash. And I'm gonna review some of these. I actually went over to Lockwood Acres on Tuesday afternoon and picked up this big assortment of, of summer squash from Farmer Ben. Um, so we're gonna use a couple of these today and then I'll just kind of show the other ones. And we are gonna grill today. So once I get a few things prepped, I'm gonna take us out to my grill, which is a little bit of a mess. I just turned it on and I haven't done anything to it yet. I haven't scraped it down, but we'll talk about that once we get out to the grill. Um, and then we'll go from there. We'll put the salad together and then Farmer Ben will be joining us around 4.40ish for Q&A at the end. Um, okay, so let's get started. The recipe is a grilled zucchini and corn salad. And I'll have Allison give you guys a quick look at that recipe. Um, I'm doing it just times one all the way through, and <clears throat> here it comes. She's going to share her screen. So this is pretty straightforward. What I love about, um, you know, the squash and just summer vegetables in general is that a lot of the flavor comes out when you apply it to high heat, such as grilling or roasting. Of course, it's summer and it's hot, and we don't want to be roasting, really, turning on our oven. So the grill is a great option for bringing out a lot of flavor in some of these vegetables. So thank you very much, Allison. There's the recipe. Um, as many of you know, the recipes can be found on our website at sustainablesolano.org. Just look under the local food page and you can find recipes as well as copies of this video that we're doing today. All right, so first um, we're going to put together a little like a, it's sort of like a marinade plus dressing. So we're going to put it in a big giant bowl because this is what everything's going to end up in at the end. So our first thing is olive oil. Because I'm grilling, and we did a little olive oil tutorial last week, um, because I'm grilling, I'm not using, you know, the higher priced olive oil that I would normally use on like a salad vinaigrette or for finishing or as a dipping sauce for anything. This is just a lower price, you know, grocery store kind of olive oil. I just have it in this, I transferred it into this uh, bottle just for kind of easy access so and the reason I'm, I'm not using a higher price one is because we are going to grill and the heat starts to you know influence the the olive oil itself it starts to break down the molecular structure so i don't want to use my you know really flavorful you know higher priced oils for that i'm going to use something basic but yet still decent and um because we're going to you know cook it so my one third cup of olive oil is going to go in here <clears throat> and then I'm going to add a couple a couple cloves of garlic. So this is just regular cloves from my head of garlic here. And I'm going to give them a whack with my knife. And then I cut off the little root section here and I pop the skin off. I think this garlic might be from terra firma. It feels super fresh. They just got done weaving a lot of their garlic into these braids. And so this was, you know, along, this was probably part of that green garlic crop that we were working with in the spring. Okay, I think you guys can all see my cutting board. Let me move this over here. Okay, so I'm just gonna mince this up. Get it chopped down into like little slices and then I'll go across you guys are kind of seeing how i changed the position of my hands to do that hear my little scraper making noises here too <clears throat> so i want to get this 
chop down fairly small because it is going to end up being part of the end salad products. So I don't want to have giant chunks of garlic. And it's also going to get used on the vegetables when they go onto the grill. All right, one more little round here. Okay, that looks about right. Okay. In it goes. Okay, so I've got the oil and the garlic right here. Next, we're going to add a little salt and pepper. So a half a teaspoon salt and a half a teaspoon pepper. This is a quarter teaspoon thing here, so I'm gonna do two of them. There's the salt. This is a really finely ground black pepper, so I'm not gonna add quite as much because it tends to be a little stronger. And then we're also going to add some pepper flakes. So we need a quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And you can adjust this to your liking. If you don't like super spicy, you know, you can hold back. If you want it to be spicier, add more, okay? So then let me grab a whisk. <clears throat> Mix this together. I want to get the, the salt and pepper kind of integrated into the oil. Okay, so here's my oil mixture. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put about a tablespoon of this onto my corn. So here's my sweet corn. I got this in my uh, CSA box this week from Terra Firma. And um, these are a little small, so I decided to use three, um, three cobs of corn instead of just two. The recipe calls for two. And I'm going to brush the oil onto the corn, which will then kind of help, help it along on the grill. So these are great little things to have in grilling season. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a little silicone brush. This is a tiny one. I have some other ones. The silicone end pops right off, and I just throw it into my dishwasher to get all the oil and marinades and whatever is on there, you know, cleaned off. And then I just hand wash the wooden handle part. Okay. But this way, it's, you can get your vegetables coated with oil relatively quickly and easily. And you keep your hands clean. That way you can keep moving. <clears throat> okay, so this piece of that corn ear is rolling around everywhere. Okay, that looks about right. Okay, so that's my corn. That'll go out to the grill as is. Next, we're gonna get our zucchini ready. And so we need about a pound and a half. And I have my scale here just for fun. So I'm gonna turn it on with the bowl on, which will kind of um, tear it to zero. And these two make up about a pound and a half, which is one pound, eight ounces. So this is really all we need for this recipe. It's gonna serve about four people. You know, this with the corn and the other goodies added on is all we need. So let me set this out of the way. You guys can see. So for the zucchini, I wanna cut it into planks. So I'm gonna cut off the, the top and the end, and then I'm gonna go straight down. And we want the planks to be about half of an inch thick or so. So you kind of have to look at the size of your squash. Um, this little yellow one is much thinner. If I were gonna use this one, I would probably just cut it in half lengthwise down. This one's a little fatter, so I'm gonna make two cuts in here to make three planks on the green zucchini. And you wanna be really careful because you're trying to cut something while it's kind of rolling around. Okay. So here I am. Ideally, these planks should be about the same thickness, okay? I'm going to get them lined up on this sheet pan, just like I did with the corn. <clears throat> okay, so I have a yellow zucchini here, too. We're going to aim for lots of color in our salad. This one's also relatively thick, so I'm going to do two cuts again. Okay. There I am. So I've got six planks of zucchini and then I've got my three ears of corn. So I want to brush the zucchini with the oil mixture also. And you, we wanna do both sides. 
because we will be flipping it. Okay, so that is side number one. Grab the tongs. And it's okay if some of the pepper and the garlic goes on here too. That's gonna, you know, if it stays on there, it'll add more flavor to your final salad. Try to get a little garlic on there. Okay, so any oil left in here, we're just gonna keep in the bowl because everything will end up back in here when we're done. Okay, so we are ready. Actually, I have room on this big pan. I'm just gonna put everything on this large pan. That way we keep things simple. <clears throat> okay. All right, let me run this out and then I'll be back to get the laptop and we'll get set up at the grill. Stand by. Luckily, we are not traveling very far. Okay, I hope you guys can see me out here. Let's see here. View. Okay. All right. So my grill has started and it's feeling pretty hot. Step one, there's a bunch of smoke coming off of here because there's, you know, still some residue from whatever we grilled before. And so I want to clean it. So I've got a big brush here and I'm just going to scrape it down. Okay, so by the way, all burners were set to high. So this thing is very hot, which is what we want. So now at this point, if your um, grates are not very well seasoned and things tend to stick, what you can do is take your tongs and put, um, grab a wad of paper towel with your tongs and then dip it in a little bit of oil you know, I would recommend something neutral like an avocado oil or, um, you know, maybe a canola, something like that. And then you can rub the paper towel on your grates to oil them a little bit. So mine, this is an old grill. Everything's pretty well seasoned. So I'm, I know things won't stick. So we're ready to go. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put my corn on here. And my zucchini. So we should be hearing a sizzling noise. Well, I can hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Just gonna spread these out. I kind of know where the hot spots are on this thing after years of use. Okay, I don't wanna crowd it, it too much. I kind of wanna space it out. I went ahead and turned on all burners here. So. I'm going to put this down because it'll kind of help facilitate the cooking. But what I'm going to look for is I want the zucchini to have kind of some brown grill marks. And that's really all I'm doing is I'm marking it. I, it might get a little bit um, caramelized on the outside. But once I get to that point, I want to stop. So because zucchini cooks pretty quickly and it has a high water content. And so, you know, it can go from, you know, crisp tender to mushy very quick. And I don't want mushy for this particular salad. So, um, so I'm going to keep my eye on that. I believe that it'll, you know, give or take, it'll be about four to six minutes probably per side on the zucchini. The corn is going to take a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to kind of keep turning it as we go. And I want that to also get a little bit brown. See, the corn is already starting to have some marks. What, what you want to look for on the corn, let's see if I can show, I don't know if you guys can see this. We've got like some, some little brown marks starting and the, the kernels start to turn a brighter yellow as we're going here too. Okay, so while we're waiting for this, um, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about some health benefits of the zucchini. All right, so you guys
guys still hear me okay? I'm it's kind of windy out here. So um, let me yeah. go back. Yeah, Allison, are we good? Yeah, you went down for a second, but you're you're great now. We're back. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, so zucchini. I was kind of reading on a site called I believe it was Healthline.com. Um, they usually list a really nice little summary with some different health um, benefits of these different vegetables and fruits that we've been using in these classes. And the zucchini has really good, it's a decent source of vitamin A. It has about 40% um, of your daily recommended intake for vitamin A, which is great for eyesight and a number of other things. Um, it is pretty high in fiber, which is beneficial. Um, it does have a high water content, as I mentioned. So if you eat it raw, you know, it's a good source of um, you know, liquid, basically. All right, I'm going to check my zucchini. Okay, we're getting there. I'm going to show you this one. We've got some hash marks started there. Let's stick it back on. I want it to get a little bit more brown. And this should not take very long. All right, I'm going to rotate my corn. Check the other one here. There's a smaller piece that's okay. I'm... Yeah, a couple of my zucchinis are read, about ready to flip. So actually, I'm going to give it just a little more time. Oh, guy there. Okay. All right. Um, the corn can really be any variety. I know sometimes at farmers markets there's you know yellow corn, there's white corn, there's bicolor corn, etc. You can use whatever you want um, for this particular recipe. It doesn't matter. And then the other ingredients that we're using today are um, basil, and we're using some feta cheese and also some lemon juice. So that's going to go into our final, um, our final mixture for to create a little simple vinaigrette for the salad at the end. So all right, a couple more things about grilling. Um, you see. I, I probably should be, have done this. <laughs> I find it handy to have long sleeves on when you're grilling, because as you're getting in there toward the back of the grill, you know, you want to try to protect your hands and your arms. Um, also, you know, what does, I want to kind of talk to you guys about what does a, a hot grill really mean? So, you know, after I initially heated it up, you know, in order to know if it's hot enough, because you do, you want high heat for this so that you're searing your vegetables. I want to be able to, hold my hand about five inches above for about three seconds. If I can hold it for more than three seconds, then your grill is probably not hot enough. So that's just kind of a little rule of thumb. You know, if you can hold it there and it's like, okay, that's hot, then you know you're up to, to the temperature you need to be at. All right. All right, I'm flipping the zucchini. I'm gonna rotate the corn a little more. Okay, all my zucchini has been turned. And we're gonna give that a little more time. Some of it's got a little bit of caramelization, so I'll show you that once we get to that point. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, other grilling equipment that you might want to have on hand, of course, are tongs. I would recommend getting multiple sets of tongs. I have about five <laughs> in my house because if you're grilling, you know, something like meat, you put it on with the raw, you want to go switch it out for some a clean set to handle the cooked or any vegetables that you might be doing at the same time, too. Um, sheet pans are essential in my world for this kind of thing. You know, you want to have something with a, a lip on it. Those flat cookie sheets I wouldn't recommend because there's almost always some kind of oil or marinade or something on here, and that's gonna keep it from kind of running off all over the place. Also, these can withstand super high temperatures. Um, so, you know, if any other parts of your grill get, you know, really hot, you know, it's not gonna affect these at all. So, kind of my, my main grilling. And then, of course, um, the other thing is the, the grill brush that I 
used at the beginning. You want to make sure you have a nice sturdy uh, wire bristle brush to get any residue off of your grill grates from the get-go. Um, and then the silicone brushes are great too. So those you can also use at the grill to, you know, um, brush on additional marinades as you're going or, you know, whatever you want. And those things are usually heat resistant up to five or 600 degrees. So they're a great accessory to have um, while you're grilling any of your veggies in the summer. So, all right, time to check again. <laughs> it's like we can kind of keep going back and forth here. <clears throat> Time to turn the corn. Let's see. The zucchini on the second side won't, shouldn't take as long as the first. Okay, one of these is already done. So it's a little bit flexible. Do you see how I can kind of wave it around? It's kind of moving. So I know that that's ready to come off. My other ones are just getting marked on the second side. But they are almost there. Okay, I think about one more minute on the zucchini and I'm gonna then pull those off. I'm gonna trade a little bit. You know, there's always a hot spot and a cooler spot. So once you kind of figure out where those are on your own grill, you can know where to move things around <clears throat> so that everything cooks evenly. All right, corn is coming along. This one I'm gonna scoot over here. Okay. All right, that one's done. I'm gonna kind of go through, do a little wiggle, just a little wiggle check. That one could use a little more. That one looks done. Okay. The zucchini slices that were from the middle, in other words, they're cut on both sides of the plank. Those will tend to cook a little bit faster than the ones that have the peeling <clears throat> on one side because the peeling is kind of tougher and it's holding it together. All right. Okay, I've got my small, one of these little ears of corn is almost ready to come off. One more side on there. Allison, can I have a time check since I'm not in my kitchen? I don't have my clock. It's 428. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. Yeah, so we'll be done with this in probably the next three or four minutes. Um, and then we'll go in and finish it up. Um, does anybody have any questions at this point? We're just kind of hanging there, out, waiting for things to cook. <laughs> there were a few questions, and it's a good time to remind everybody, if you want to use the, the raise hand button, um, then we can unmute you to ask your question. But those of you who sent me questions, I'll ask those real quick. So um, one of the questions was um, fresh gar garlic versus the jarred minced garlic, um, if one of those is better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I always prefer the fresh garlic, and I think by the mince jarred, you're talking about the where it's minced up and it's in a little bit of a liquid and it's in like a glass jar or sometimes even a tube at the grocery store. Um, I prefer the fresh. I find that there's a little bit of a different flavor mixed in. I don't know if they add a preservative or anything to that. Um, but there is kind of a different kind of flavor that I, I've sensed when using the jarred garlic. So I would definitely prefer the fresh. Also, you have a little more control using the fresh garlic because you can chop it up or slice it to the size that you want. You know, in this case, we are using a mince, which is probably the same as what you're getting in those jars. Um, but you do have that option then. If you don't want it as small as what's in the jar, you know, you can cut it or chop it a little bit bigger. So I, I recommend the fresh um, from just the garlic head if you can track it down. Great. Um, the other question, um, someone's wondering, they only have an electric grill and they're wondering if that will work for the vegetables and if you have any tips on using that. Um, an electric grill. So is this, is it like a, um, a tabletop type of thing that you plug in and then it has I'm guessing this is kind of what I'm thinking of like the old style. My mom had one of these and my grandma had it. It's like the, 
those old school, it's almost like a fry pan, but you plug it in. And so I'm guessing this is similar. You know, that's a good point. I will talk about some alternatives. If you don't have a grill like this outside, there are some options and I have some things to show and tell at the end um, that you can use on your stovetop. But yes, I, I think if you have an electric grill um, that's like a stove, like a countertop type of model, that would work fine. You may not have as much, sorry, I'm talking and turning corn at the same time. Um, you may not have as much con heat, like, um, you know, for something like this, you're basically right next to the fire. Whereas sometimes the electric ones, you know, the heat conductivity is n maybe not quite as strong, but I think it would totally work. I mean, I, I guess it just depends on the model and the make and how the grates are arranged and you know, where the, where the heat source is coming from. So I'll have to look, look that up and see what they, what they look like. <laughs> Do you think that's the case for an outdoor electric grill? That's um, what this person is asking about as oh, well. An, an outdoor electric grill. I don't know if I've ever seen an outdoor electric grill. I mean, I'm guessing that it's just, yeah, like something you plug in and then the, the heat mechanism goes right into the grate. So as long as your grates are heating up, you know, I think that would work great because if you have a heat element under, you know, like maybe a brick or some kind of a block that's putting the heat up, then it might take a little longer to get things done. But if your heating element is going straight through, like I'm just, I'm envisioning wiring or something that's going straight into the grate, then I think that would work fine. But I'm not sure if I've ever seen one. So send a picture to us then we can check it out. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to check the corn again. All right. Okay, this guy we're pulling off. Let's see, it's got nice little charred bits of corn. We need, and this one's about ready to come off too. I'm going to keep those two on and then we'll go in in about a minute. Okay, any other questions while we're out here and then we'll I'll start transferring everything back in. So we have another question and I'm thinking this is a good one um, for you as well as Farmer Ben once we have him on here. Um, mm -hmm. But from someone who's been growing zucchinis, uh, wondering when is a good time to harvest them? Aha, uh -huh. so my tip is, you know, I would keep them at about maybe, what is this, six inches or so? The thing about the zucchinis and the yellow squash is that the bigger they get, the less flavorful they are. And some varieties even start to get a little bit bitter um, once they get bigger. <laughs> so bigger and bitter. Um, so I would keep them, you know, I would pick them when they're roughly about six inches-ish. Um, and, you know, it may take some experimentation if you're growing a new variety that you've never really done before. You might have to try out a couple different sizes as you go along. Um, I actually have a yellow squash growing over here. You know what? Let me pull off since we're, I'm like mobile today. Let me pull the corn off and we can walk over to my plant and see what it's doing just for fun. Okay, I think oh, I need a little bit more on that one. So this is, like, this is like the experimental class of walking around my yard. Hold on. <laughs> so I think I actually have some zucchini blossoms on it too. I don't know if you guys can see any of this. I'm like out here. Yeah, we can see the leaves. I see, you the, can blossoms. see the leaves. Do you see mm -hmm. there's a little yellow guy down there growing? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, here's a blossom. Let's pluck that off. Okay. See if I have this about where I was before. I think my glasses are on my head. Okay, now I can see you guys. Um, so yeah, so this is a zucchini blossom. So this is kind of a, what happens first, and then the squash starts to grow off the end of here, and then this will just kind of you know wilt away after a while. So these are a little bit of a culinary delicacy because a lot of chefs like to um, bread these and then throw them in the deep fryer and then you eat it. So this is one part of the plant that you can actually eat, you know, in addition to the actual squash. Um, so, yeah. 
But I think, you know, in terms of like when to pick, yeah, let's ask Farmer Ben what he thinks. I, again, I think it depends on variety and I'll, I'll show you some of the other varieties I got from him once we get back inside. Okay, I'm gonna pull this last bit of corn off. We have some, definitely have some charred pieces here and I'm gonna turn all of this off. Okay. All right, let me run the food. Actually, I'm gonna run the laptop in first and then I will come back and get the food. We go. Hopefully, you don't see too much of my messy house. <laughs> All right, I think that's about where we had this set up before. Let me just see if you guys can see me. Looks about right. Okay, let me go grab the pan of food. Okay, here we are. This is hot. I don't, I don't really want to put hot on my counter, so let me stick it on top of the towel. Okay, all right. Let me wash my hands again, and then we will proceed. And I will we'll also talk about some of these other squashes. Okay, so the rest of this recipe is very simple and quick, which is good because I think Farmer Ben might be joining us shortly. <clears throat> Let's see, I used that towel. Let me grab another towel. Okay. All right, so we have our original batch of oil and garlic and spices here. We're going to add a little bit of lemon juice to that. Um, just a, a few teaspoons. These are huge lemons I have here. All right, I'm just gonna drizzle that in. So that's about three teaspoons and four. Kind of eyeball that. And then the next thing we're gonna do is cut up our vegetables, and I have a little optional trick to show you for the corn. Okay, and keep in mind a lot of this just came off the grill. I pulled the zucchini off first, so that one's probably not quite as hot. And I have an extra towel here to grab it just in case it is. So I'm just gonna cut this kind of on the bias into chunks. This is kind of a chunky salad. Where's my, here's my favorite scraper. All right, and that goes. Let's see if I can do a couple of these at a time. Yellow ones are done. I'm just getting the green one done. Last little bit. Okay, so there's the zucchini. Now we are going to cut the corn off of the cob. Um, you can do it like this, but I also wanted to show another little trick that I saw, which is with the help of a bunt cake pan. So if you have one of these and want to try it, here's what you can do. You set this here, and then the hole on the bunt pan helps to stabilize your corn, and then you just slice it off, and as you're going, it ends up in the pan. Then it's not going kind of all over your counter. So this is kind of a nifty little trick to keep everything in one place so you're not chasing corn kernels all over the place. Okay. And then while I'm doing this, I will just point out my basil right here. So I have a couple kinds in here that I just wanted to show you. I have a purple Thai basil, and then I have two other kinds of kind of like Italian basil, although this one is called a lettuce leaf basil. So I don't know if you can see, it's got kind of some, some 
scallops edging along the, the sides and it's a little bit lighter green in color. And when I got it, I was told it has a milder flavor. Like you can kind of just toss it in with your salad as if it's, you know, another piece of lettuce. Um, then I also have kind of the standard, um, you know, Italian basil here. So I'll use the, those two kinds just for fun. We'll use those green ones. And this is how I like to store it. This purple basil has been in here for mm, three days and it's, it's great. So it's in my cup of water and you can just leave it on the countertop, no need to refrigerate and it'll be ready for you when you are ready to cook. Okay, here's my last piece of corn, a little cooler. All right. There it is. <clears throat> All right, and I think that that's about it. We're gonna give it a toss. I'll add my add my um, basil in there and the feta cheese, and we're done. So I just need a couple of tablespoons of basil. I'm gonna take some of these leaves off, and I don't have to do anything fancy with this. I'm just gonna bunch it up, and then kind of chop it. And then the cheese that I'm using is a brined feta. So it just comes in a chunk and there's a, you know, a liquid, like a salt water liquid with it. So I just cut off about two ounces of this feta. If you don't have feta, you could um, use you know, like an Asiago um, or even a Parmesan and you can shave it. Another good option would be um, Cotija, Mexican, uh, that crumbly white Mexican cheese. Um, so that would be yummy too. It's kind of salty. And that would be a really good addition if you happen to have any of that on hand. <clears throat> all right, one more little bit, then I will plate it up. And I think it's all in there. Let's see, we've got the oil, the garlic, the Corn the key. Yep. Okay. All right. There it is. We'll grab a bowl. I'll throw a little basil on top here. Let me do a little slicey garnish thing. Excellent. All right, well, that's good. He's just in time. We can walk through all these squashes that I got from him and he can tell us why he grows them and maybe a little bit about it and where to find him and all of his goods. Hi, Ben. Ta-da. There you are. <laughs> all right. Can you see me, Ben? I cannot. I have a blank screen. Oh, okay, so you can't see me either? No, but I can hear, so that's you good. You can hear. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm going to explain uh, to the group, and I'm going to show them what I picked up from you on Tuesday afternoon. Um, and you can maybe talk about some of these different squash that you grow, and maybe why you grow it, and why you like to grow it. So I have this big round green zucchini. Is this a Ronde Denise? Yes. Round yep. Denise. Round Denise. Okay. As in Nice. Nice. Like in France. In France. The city. I think so, I think. yes. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> so the one I have here is kind of Well big. that's that's my best I like that squash the best for barbecuing especially because it's it's got a, a wide footprint so you can cut it in quarter inch slabs or cut it at an angle and you can really put it across the grill there and they don't fall in. So, and what I just do with those is I just throw a little olive oil, a little garlic salt, and then maybe a splash of balsamic and you're pretty much done. There's, it's really simple. Right. And those things are so sweet. It's just, it, you really don't have to put anything on them. Awesome. I should have used that one on the grill. I used your, um, one of your big green zucchinis and then one of the yellow zucchinis. So I have a very uh -huh. colorful salad head, but that's good to know. Okay, so these big round ones are excellent for grilling. Correct. 
And then I have another green one, but it looks like it has like kind of like stripes almost. It's like green. That's another kind of Italian a... heirloom. It's um, mm -hmm. Costa Romanesco. Okay. Just an Italian heirloom. Awesome. And I, I just like the different colors. So that's how I pick my squash Good. and how I pick my chicken breeds. So that all my eggs are different colors. <laughs> well, you know, when you have all these different colors, I mean, it does add, you know, some interest to your dish or whatever. And of course, it's going to look beautiful at the farmer's market too. So, <laughs> okay. And then I have yellow zucchini. So these to me look like normal green zucchini, except they're yellow. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like the skins are a little smoother than the green zucchini that you might grow or find. A little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is just an, a zucchini and... Again, I just like different colors. Yeah, good, okay. Also pretty, probably good for grilling. Okay, then I have a couple of big patty pans. There's a big white patty pan here. Mm -hmm, that's that Bennigan. Looks like flying saucers, Bennigan. Uh -huh. And then there's a yellow patty pan. That is called, I think it's called Sunburst. A sunburst, okay, good. Yeah, and to grill these, what I would do, if you wanna grill them, um, you know, I would just cut off the end here and then I would try to slice them and keep them round. You don't want to go this way because again, the point is they'll to keep it the on. Yeah, they'll fall through the grill. So I just shave off the top and the bottom and if they're smaller, I cut them in half once. But in the case of this one, I might have room for two cuts. Um, same with the white one. Um, and, you know, these kind of, these patty pans, especially the white one, it almost looks like those gourds that you would find in the fall, but these are not going to keep, right? This is something we want to eat right away. No, you, yeah, you want to eat them. Yeah, right. Okay. So, and then the last one over here are little yellow crookneck squashes. Yeah, those are nice and buttery. I, I, I like to pan fry those and, and even more butter, but. Right. <laughs> That is true. The yellow squash, it does have a nice buttery taste whenever you cook it, either on the grill or like you said, sauteed, pan fried, etc. So these are fun, fun to have around. Um, and then in terms of storage, um, I know that you probably don't want to keep these in a plastic bag because moisture can build up and then it'll start to deteriorate the skin. Do so you have any recommendations for storing them? Uh, what was the question again? Um, do you have any recommendations for storing the zucchini and all these different kinds of squashes? You know, do you, uh, store, you can I just keep them out on the a counter. Uh, 50 degrees is ideal for them with high humidity. Um, and okay. most houses, you know, stay. But today, we're actually putting all the things we picked, peppers, everything but the tomatoes are going into the reefer at 50 degrees. Right. Okay. Most refrigerators, by the way, should be at 40 degrees or lower. So, you know, the fridge, if it's a, a warm day, you will want to put it in the fridge, but I would recommend, you know, trying to keep it um, away from the really coldest spot of your fridge. Sometimes things tend to freeze if they're positioned in the back of the refrigerator or near the freezer, whether that's above or, or below. Um, you know, I found that putting squashes like this in a paper bag Sometimes I even double paper bag them and put them in the fridge. Um, so I'm, and it, that way it gives it a little bit of breathability, but yet it protects it. Um, and they tend to hold up fairly well. I mean, you want to have, have them sealed with something. Otherwise, I think they tend to get shrivelly. But if you have it in plastic and they're wet or the condensation happens, then that extra water can start to, you know, break them down too. So I don't know. That's, that's what I found that works most of the time. Um, yeah, okay. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, um, you know, we've talked about different methods of cooking them, but you can also eat them raw. They're not as flavorful. They're a little bit milder and sometimes, um, I don't want to say taste like cardboard, but <laughs> <laughs> but they, they're going to need a lot of seasoning. I think you're going to have, you want to have like a fairly flavorful vinaigrette of some kind, um, maybe with some lemon, um, some spices, something to kind of, you know, boost it up a little bit because they are very neutral when you eat them raw. 
um, but you can you can eat them raw. Um, you know, you can slice them and stuff them with different things. You know, these longer ones and this this kind of size. The um, bigger make, zucchinis too. You can use um, it's called a zoodler or whatever, but you can uh, basically carve the zucchini into noodles, and it really is a great substitute for pasta. Oh right, yes, I'm going to mention that too. Yeah, those spiralizers or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can make it like a spaghetti, and so then you've got a super low cal, low carb type of you know noodle if you want. Um, what else? You can they can go into soups, you know, um, and of course you can shred them and put them into baked goods. You know, everybody's kind of heard about zucchini bread. Well, that's what you do at the end of the summer when you're sick and tired of grilling them. <laughs> Start putting it into baked goods or use it as a baseball bat. <laughs> so, with your tomatoes that you're also tired of looking at. So, okay. Um, does anybody have qu other questions for Ben? I, I attempted, Ben, to take my laptop over to my squash plant, which is just starting to have zucchini blossoms. Actually, it's a yellow squash of some sort. I don't even know what kind. I got it from a friend. Um, so it's just getting the blossoms, which are like little guy here, and the squash are, are maybe like, you know, three or four inches long. So, um, so they got to see what one looks like. Do you, do you have any recommendations for us home gardeners trying to grow the squash? Um, it's so variable. They like sun, so make sure they're in the sun. If they're in the shade, they're just not really going to do well. Mm hmm okay good Allison do we have any other questions well there was the the question about harvesting and you two actually touched on um, kind of a follow-up question to that so when is the best time to harvest and then if they do get too big what are some things you can do with them so I don't know if you have any suggestions <laughs> um, <laughs> We have someone who has one that's over a foot long and a softball's width. So, um, oh my yeah. <laughs> what what do we do with with um, those? We stuff it or make zucchini bread. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would say too. <laughs> because I, it seems um, Ben, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, I I feel like with the bigger they get, sometimes the flavor just gets a little washed out, and some varieties even start to get kind of bitter. So yeah, once they get really huge, you Zucchini's might even... not so much, but the seeds get bigger as they get larger too. So you lose, you know, the meat of the of the squash itself. So you may even have to slice it lengthwise and kind of scoop some of the seeds out before right. you can then yeah grate it and work with it. Right, right. Okay, good. Let's see how we're doing it. Okay, well, we're almost there. Yeah. Anything um, else? So, so one other question with the different types of squash, are they something that can be substituted um, like easily for each other? Um, and then, yeah, if, if anybody has additional questions, please send them to me or raise that hand so we can make sure to get them asked. Yeah, I would say definitely. I could have made this salad with any of these here, including the patty pans. Um, but I wanted to keep this intact to show all of you. So um, yes, the, you know, the yellow squashes, like these crook neck ones, you know, they're technically, I think, been not a zucchini variety. I mean, they are a yellow summer squash. So they're going to have a little bit different flavor profile, but you could absolutely use any of this that we've shown, all these different kinds of, of you know, zucchinis and yellow squash and summer squash in this particular recipe. So feel free to interchange as much as you would like. And we've got lots down here on the farm. So if you need some more and some more color, just come on down to the farm and give us a call, make sure we're here. Right. So tell us Ben how to find you and where to find you and find your products. You can find me online. We have a website. It's it's in construction, so we're constantly adding things. Um, so that's uh, lockwoodacres.com, L-O-C-K-E-W-O-O-D-A-C-R-E-S.com. Um, we actually have a store now uh, where you can purchase things. Um, 
you can come to the farm and the address is there. We're, you know, on Lock Road, just off 505 and Midway. So just outside of town. Actually, we're right on the city limits. Oh. Um, and then the good old fashioned phone, 707-624-0831. And how is the, is the farmer's market happening? I know that typically you would be at the Vacaville farmer's market on Saturday. Yeah, is that still the case? We're doing that tomorrow from eight to 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have a CSA. When I was there picking this up, there was somebody else coming to swap out a CSA crate, which is community yeah. supported yeah. agriculture. Yeah, so every, every week, um, people have prepaid for the box and uh, you get anything that's available on the farm and it's based on size and what you, uh, size your family. And you can do, you can get the basket each week or every other week, you know, based on how often you cook. So we, we try and make it as convenient as possible um, while still, you know, not bringing it to your door. So I only have pickups here at the farm and um, at the farmer's market. Right. And your farm pickup time is Tuesdays, is it Tuesdays? From 3.30 from three, to 6. 3.30 to 6. Okay. Yep. So if anybody's and in the, the Vacaville back, area. The Vacaville farmer's market is, is 8 to 12 tomorrow. Excellent. And okay. we do have another question. So T, I'm going to unmute you here. Give it a second. There we go. You should be off mute. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. <laughs> Hello, yes. Chef Steph. This is your favorite um, participant. Hello, Allison. Uh, this is the uh, female who said that she likes to eat, but she don't like to cook. I attended your last webinar. I just want to say um, I did make the sauce, the sauce that was very sweet that you can use for fruits and vegetables. You know what I'm talking about? I can't yeah. Think. It was I, the honey citronette, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just want to say it was delicious. Oh, Thank good. You. I want to also compliment you on this webinar. I wasn't expecting to learn how to grill because, again, I don't cook. So I will be grilling on July 4th because of you. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and I will be making this salad as well. So I'm just very grateful for the experience and for the knowledge that you have presented to all of us. So, so thank you. You're very welcome. I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, and anytime any of you guys have questions, feel free to re reach out to me directly. Um, I'm going to be offline next week, but, um, you know, I'm pretty much around for the rest of the summer. So, yeah, feel free. Okay. Great. Well, I think that's it for questions. Um, and I did put a survey link in. I'll put it back in um, again. Um, if you even if you took the survey before um, it we've set it up so you can take it again um, and that always helps us with funders and ideas for future classes that's right well hopefully we'll see you down at the farmers market tomorrow make sure you get early because things are going fast all right good thanks for the recommendation Ben all Thank right you, thanks ben, for, for joining us yeah thanks for joining us take care all right. bye bye okay bye bye, bye yeah.